Hi everyone, so welcome to my first video in a series on critical reasoning, uh, sometimes called critical thinking, okay? So logic is the most general study that deals with arguments. Its task is to discover fundamental principles. What kind of principles? Well, we want to know the kind of principles that distinguish good and bad arguments, and we'll say more about what we mean by good and bad arguments as the series progresses. For now, let's just understand that sometimes arguments are best studied as abstract patterns of reasoning. Uh, we call these abstract patterns general forms, and then we, we focus on these general forms rather than on particular arguments. Okay, an important topic in logic is validity. Okay, so, so we talk about valid and invalid arguments. All right, and once you know a lot of general forms of arguments, then you don't need to worry about the actual argument. Uh, you more so just have to worry about what its general form is, and then you know you, you typically know which argument forms are valid and which ones aren't. So you you have to care much less about what the argument actually says when you take this approach. Uh, so we could study those general principles that distinguish valid and invalid argument forms. Notice I said argument forms rather than arguments. Okay, you can't have general principles that distinguish good arguments from bad arguments, really, because there's just there's just too many. Uh, so you you have principles that distinguish between valid and invalid argument forms, okay? And this would be an abstract treatment of argument forms which makes heavy use of symbology. That's what we do in formal logic. It, it kind of looks mathematical, okay? Some videos in this series are on basic formal logic, okay? But a different yet complementary way to view an argument is to treat it as a particular use of language. So we make arguments a lot. We are most accustomed to voicing reading or hearing actual specific arguments in real life rather than uh, turning you know logical operators in that we find in statements into symbols and then doing some analysis okay so making arguments is one of the most important things we do with words and we so we are used to doing it in everyday life so this is an easier place uh, to start as opposed to formal logic that's how I will treat arguing in this series as a linguistic activity we won't study uh, abstract patterns very much, but when we do, we'll study them as they occur in concrete settings, you know, uh, real-life practical settings. Now, we call this approach informal logic. And as we proceed, our study of informal logic will raise questions of the following kind. Uh, you know, what is the place of argument within language? What are the characteristic words or phrases of arguments? How do these, func how do these words function? Okay, what tasks are arguments supposed to perform? Is it plural? Is it, or is it just one? You know, is it task as opposed to tasks? And so on, okay? Although I'll cover some formal logic, the series is focused mainly on informal logic. I'll make a video series on formal logic. I'm excited about that. So it's part of my motivation to do this series first. Uh, one of my objectives in this series is to make things simple and clear. Informal logic is supposed to help us clarify our thinking. So it's counterproductive to make long informal logic videos about complicated topics. So I don't want to cover confusing topics in this series. Don't worry though, I'll, I'll cover the main stuff you'll see in a standard textbook or an introductory course, so we aren't going to miss or skip anything crucial. Uh, if you want to see more, like and subscribe. Uh, if you like this video, feel free to share it. The next video will kick off the analysis section of this informal logic series, and that's to do with topics about how to analyze arguments. Okay, bye for now.